Okay. Please listen up as we go through our day seven notes. And our topic is angles, and this is part one. What is an angle? It's one of these thingamajobbers. But the way it's constructed fundamentally is that we have a ray coming out of B like this. And then another ray that shares the same endpoint. So an angle is formed from two rays with common endpoint. This common endpoint in an angle is called the vertex. And there will be times when we're referring to things like the interior of the angle, the exterior of the angle, or on the angle. Please add those notes. These rays that separate the interior from the exterior are also known as the sides of the angle. When we name an angle, we'd ideally like to name it using three letters. The middle letter must always be the vertex. So for instance, if I were to say A, then B, then C. B is the middle one, and that's the vertex. So that seems right. But I'm going to clarify, just like we did with lines and points and segments and rays, that this is an angle we're talking about. So in front of it, I put the little less than symbol. Looks like a little angle. And I'm talking about angle ABC. Is there a second way I could name this angle using three letters? Yeah. Good. Angle CBA, because B is still in the middle, and I'm using points from either of the sides of the angle. There are occasions when we get to use a single letter, and this is one of those occasions. I could actually call this angle B, just the vertex, because it's clear enough. There isn't a controversy over whether we're talking about one angle or another. If, for example, I were to look at this shape, however, this would not be a, an occasion when I could use angle B because it would be unclear if I'm talking about this little angle or this bigger angle or even this whole side over here. When we wanna talk about an angle's measure, just the numerical value, like the 60 degrees here, what we would do is we'd put this little M in front of it. We'd say that the measure of angle A, B, C is equal to 60 degrees. And it's kind of akin to that thing where we say that the length of AB is equal to four inches or something. We're just talking about the measurement of it. We're not talking about the object itself. If we just put angle in front of it, now we're talking about the object itself. We'll cover this in greater depth later. Okay. And I'm actually gonna suggest that we change the title here a little bit. Instead of types of angles, Let's say classification of angles. And I think you guys know these four, maybe, maybe only three of these. How do we classify this angle? Good, you're thinking the right thing. It's an acute angle. And let's put in a little bit of detail to that. We know that angles are acute if they're trapped, like X's value here is between 90 degrees and zero degrees. Any measure between zero and 90 is called an acute angle. What happens when it hits 90 over here, the third one? Right, call it a right angle. So that's when X equals 90 degrees. What happens here if it's more than 90 degrees, but less than 180? Obtuse, good. 
So that's when it's pinched between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. What about this one on the far right? It does make a line. These are actually opposite rays that form this angle, right? But if we're talking about the angle, how big is this angle, do you think? Good, it's 180 degrees. And when X is equal to exactly that 180 degrees, we call this a straight angle. Now we're gonna add in two more that don't fit with these pictures per se. One over here is what if X is equal to exactly zero degrees? Any guesses what we call that angle? A zero angle. And then over here, if it's greater than 180 degrees, that's called a reflex. R-E-F-L-E-X. Any questions on classifying angles? Okay, let's take a look at the example here. Name the vertex of this angle. What would we put? K is correct. And we just name it as a single capital print letter because it's a point. Name the sides of the angle. Well, L is a point. KL, good. We're going to talk about the rays. So KL and KJ. And we'll name them as rays, starting with B. Thank you. Or K. Let's name this angle three ways. Somebody raise your hand and give me one of them. Okay. Allie, go ahead. Angle J, K, L. Good. You put K in the middle. Okay. Give me another one. Someone new. Yeah, Lila. Good. Angle L, K, J. And I often make my angles look too much like an L, so be careful with that. One more. Theo. Good, we can say angle K this time because it's not ambiguous over what we're talking about. And if this picture were drawn to scale, how would we classify this angle? Obtuse is correct. Any questions on this piece? I'm gonna leave example two for you to do as part of the homework. Now here we've got two angles that share the same measure. And if the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B, then just like we did with segments, if there's only one measurable component about an angle and those measurements are the same, then those angles are congruent. Do you remember what congruent means? Remember the Ferrari? Same, like perfectly the same, identical in every way. And so if these angles are congruent, then I can say that angle A is congruent to angle B. Remember that congruent sign is an equal sign with a little tilde on top. Okay, next page. So if we take an angle and we stick a ray through the middle of it, if the ray divides that angle into two congruent angles, then that's called an angle bisector. In other words, we're saying that this angle and this angle come out being the same. Notice how I'm using the same hash marks we can use for segments on little arcs to show that this piece is the same size as this piece. In the diagram at the right, the ray BD is an angle bisector. Therefore, what can we conclude? What's congruent to what? You're seeing it right, but how do we name this angle? 
ABD, three letters, right? Angle ABD would be congruent to what angle? Good, DBC, I could have said CBD as well. One of my favorite words in all of mathematics, perpendicular. I don't know why I like that word, perpendicular. Two lines that intersect at what kind of angle? Right. Yeah. If they meet in a right angle, those two lines are called perpendicular lines. And this is a nice little piece. A lot of people don't know this, but if you ever see an upside down T, that's the symbol for perpendicular. So for example, I could say that L, written as a lowercase cursive letter, is perpendicular to M. I added one too many lump on that M, but you get the idea. Those two lines are perpendicular, meaning they meet in a right angle. Do you have to work cursive? I do need the cursive because I'm using these lowercase cursive letters to indicate this whole line. A perpendicular bisector does two things. It's not only perpendicular, but it also exactly splits a segment in half. These little marks mean that those two parts are the same value. And with one hash mark and one hash mark, that means those are the same. I could also put like two hash marks and two hash marks, and that means those are the same, or three and three. It just allows you to have several pieces in a drawing marked as congruent. So a perpendicular bisector is a line segment or ray, could be anything, that is perpendicular to a segment. And it goes through what point here? Right. It is a right angle, but if it has to split this thing exactly in half, what's this point? The midpoint, good. In the diagram at the right, LM, we wanna talk about the line, so we're gonna draw the symbol over the top, is the perpendicular bisector of what? Good. And do I write it just as PQ next to each other? Or do I need something more? Mm -hmm. Well, not angle, segment, right? We're saying that PQ segment is being cut in half. Any questions on this stuff? Okay, last piece. Just as we did the segment addition postulate, where we said that if you have a segment with a point in the middle, the two smaller pieces of the segment add up to the bigger one, we can do the same here. Let's say that I told you this was 30 degrees and this is 50 degrees. Then how big is the measure of angle ABC? Sure it is, it's 80, it's the sum of those. In other words, if we say that the measure of angle A, B, D plus what? Good, DBC, but before I write that, I'm gonna put the measure of angle. I gotta include those notations in there. The measure of the angle DBC is equal to what? Uh, in this case, it would be 80, but in general, we wanna go with ABC. And again, let's do the notation right. We're talking about the measure of an angle, measure of angle ABC. And then once I've got this written out, I can use it as a template. ABD is first, so 48 plus, then I want DBC, so 78 equals, and that's supposed to equal the measure of angle ABC. Super easy. In this case, 110 and 16 is 126 equals the measure of angle ABC.
I do strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to do as the instruction of skills sheet says. First, write it in terms of variables, then do substitution and solve. For example, number three here, let's first write it in terms of variables. Measure of what angle? PQS plus the measure of angle Good, SQR is equal to what measure? Good, PQR, the whole thing. And once we write this out, it's really easy to make the equation and solve. PQS was given to us to be this 13X plus four. SQR was 10X minus one and PQR it's up here, 141. Combine like terms, 23x plus 3 equals 141 minus 3, 138. To get a 3 to be an 8 exactly, maybe 6. 6 times 2 is 12, 18. Yeah. So divide by 23, x equals 6. And then this asks for a little more. It asks for the measure of PQS. Well, the measure of PQS is supposed to be 13 times whatever X is plus four. I now know that X is six. So 13 times six is 60, 78 plus four would equal 82. So PQS is 82. We also want SQR, which is supposed to be 10 times whatever X is minus one. In this case, X is six. 10 times six is 60 minus one is 59. So this is 59 degrees. Do we have to write the letters before we solve the problem? These things? Remember the overarching, oh, up here, this? Yeah. Yes. Remember, the overarching theme in this course is how do you know when something is true? Communicating why things are true is the whole point of this course. So if you just start throwing an equation together without writing this, I don't know why it's true. Your job is to communicate that to me. Okay, and the fourth page is blank. This is your homework. You have, uh, what do we have here? This is almost three o'clock period. You have about 45 minutes left to complete this. I think you are in good shape for that. Please use this time well.